Good morning and welcome to today's online lecture of the Try What Walk series. My name is Cormac Walsh from Lufana University in Lüneburg. Today I will focus on the topic of climate adaptation and nature protection through a case study of a specific policy strategy, the Wadden C2100 strategy in Schleswig-Holstein. The idea here really is to use this case study as a, as a way in to explore different concepts of nature society relations at the Wadden Sea. This is based on my own research that I have conducted over the last number of years as a social scientist working at the Wadden Sea. It follows an interpretive qualitative analysis approach which involves critical analysis of policy documents and decision-making processes, um, including interviews with key stakeholders and actors in governance processes. In particular, my work is focused on how meanings are articulated and negotiated in decision-making processes. As you will be aware, the Wadden Sea is a, an international area um, with a long history of transboundary exchange and cooperation since the 1970s. In fact, it is recognized internationally as, an, as a leading good practice example on transboundary cooperation. Nevertheless, and really what made it very interesting for me to research this area is the fact that there are considerable differences in governance practices in both uh, nature conservation and also coastal defense, coastal protection in each of the three countries. It is a World Heritage Site since 2009. Um, it is recognized as an, yeah, really an intertidal ecosystem of outstanding universal value. I won't say any more about the ecology of the Wadden Sea, that's not my area of expertise. Um, but for today, we will move to Schleswig-Holstein. So in terms of the approach to protected area management here, a national park was established in 1985. Uh, it is IUCN category two. So it's a, a fairly strict national park. It would est was established at the time, despite considerable opposition from the local population. Um, in the national park law at the time, um, there was a strong focus on the preservation of the unique character of the Watton Sea and its originality or pristine character. So this is really seen as pristine nature. And the uh, conservation philosophy, our approach to nature conservation, has been very much around minimal intervention, letting nature be nature. And really, over the next um, 15 minutes or so, what I want to show is how the, the challenges presented by climate change really um, expose the limits of this approach, letting nature be nature, and how this is then dealt with within the context um, of the Wadden Sea in Schleswig-Holstein. It is important, however, also to recognize the uh, the history of coastal protection within this coastal landscape also. We have a thousand year history of dike building, land reclamation and land drainage. And these have dramatically um, impacted on the coastal landscape. In this map, you can see the areas that have been um, diked over a long period of time. Um, so there have been successive um, lines of, of dike building which um, um, have, have varied over time as well. Um, the areas in green on this map are all polder lands which have been reclaimed from the sea and protected from the sea at various times in the past. At the same time the coastal landscape has been dramatically reshaped by catastrophic storm floods, um, 
with key floods occurring, for example, in the 14th century and again in the 17th century, which led to significant loss of life and livelihoods and um, to uh, settlements also, which um, have disappeared under the sea. Um, and really, in this context, then coastal protection must be uh, recognized as a very long, proud tradition um, associated with a certain mythology. Um, these catastrophic storm floods play a very important role in the collective memory of the region as well. Nevertheless, we see a paradigm shift um, really from the from the 1970s, from a primary focus on coastal protection to nature protection, not just in Schleswig-Holstein, but, but more broadly um, along the Wadden Sea coast. Uh, within Schleswig-Holstein, a key um, event here, a key moment, was the, the diking of Nordstrand Bay, the Nordstrander Bucht, uh, north of Husum. Um, this was a long process which was finally completed in 1987. Initially, the rationale was land reclamation um, and also rationalization of coastal defense. Uh, with, yeah, really a focus here on agricultural land initially. Um, and this, of course, shifted um, with massive po protests and a a recognition, a first recognition that there was a need to protect the the Watton Sea in front of the dikes, um, as well as the the land behind the dikes. So here we see the beginnings of a a shift in values, and it's very interesting to note that across the Watton Sea there are similar um, key moments or pivotal moments in history with the protruding dike, for example in southern Denmark, um, and also similar examples in um, close to Ameland in the, in the Netherlands um, in the 1960s already, where the uh, coastal engineering projects really became a focus for this negotiation of different perspectives and the, uh, a shift in values in terms of um, what should be protected at the coast and what should policies focus on from a, a common good perspective. So really sites of, of tension and conflict and negotiation of different perspectives. Um, so this idea that the, the Wadden Sea is a, is a drowned cultural landscape continues to feature quite prominent, prominently. So this, this quote here, for example, from 1974, the Watton Sea is not an original natural landscape, but a cultural landscape lost to the sea. So in one form or another, the Frisian inhabitants have paid for the Watton Sea. That is why they pr primarily are entitled to decide about the Watton Sea. So here there is an association with the cultural landscape of the Watton Sea, not just behind the dikes, but also in front of the dikes, with the with Frisian identity, so a specific regional cultural identity, um, and really arguing against this nature conservation perspective that this is a pristine natural landscape. Uh, the the sign that you see here, um, eco dictatorship, no thanks. Um, and then God shoved us mer the Frisia de Kuste. This means God created the sea, but the Frisians the coast. This was a, a sign which was um, constructed um, on the Eilerstedt Peninsula in the, I think in the 1990s, at a time of heightened tensions and, and protests over the, the national park plans. Um, and this really, yeah, illustrated this perspective that the the Wadden Sea is not a, a pure natural landscape, but in fact a, a man-made landscape associated with a regional culture and um, that the conservation approach is in some way um, not democratic because it's not listening to the perspectives of the local people. So that's really the, the background um, to what I want to 
really focus on today. Um, so with climate adaptation at the Watton Sea, it's been recognised that there is a vulnerability, first of all, to rising sea levels. Um, and there are also questions about the future sustainability of the current system of dike protection. Will it be possible to continue to heighten and straighten the dikes? Will they continue to provide the same level of safety in 50 or 100 years? Um, so the, these questions are there in relation to the Wadden Sea ecosystem, um, but also in relation to the protection of lives and livelihoods at the coast. So it has been recognised that there is a need for sand nourishment in some way to allow the Wadden Sea to continue to grow to compensate for anthropogenic sea level rise. And this was the context for the development of the Wadden Sea 2100 strategy, a process that began then in 2012. And this process was interesting because it included um, representatives, officials working within the National Park Administration and also coastal engineers as well um, from the Coastal Protection Agency. So they came together to create a joint strategy. From the beginning, however, there were two taboo topics which were not to be addressed. First of all, the focus was to be only on the Watton Sea in front of the dikes. So even though this is a long-term strategy to 2100, it was said, no, we will only look in front of the dikes and assume that the current dike line will remain in place in 2100. Um, the second topic then from the coastal engineering perspective, they said, okay, we will not talk about building barrier dams. So this was the idea that you could create barriers between the islands. Um, so further, further west to create an additional barrier, which from a coastal protection perspective um, would provide additional protection for the coastal and island inhabitants. But of course, from a nature conservation perspective, would essentially not be possible um, or not compatible with current um, environmental legislation. So it was decided to not address these topics. Um, so there were certain uh, boundaries within which this strategy was developed to frame this discussion. Um, a key element here was that it is a, a common strategy for both coastal protection and nature conservation. Um, and interviewees here, they said very explicitly that this was reframing um, protection in this context as protection of the Watton Sea, including both of these aspects together. So the key question here then was how to reconcile sand nourishment, so active intervention with a nature conservation philosophy of letting nature be nature. Uh, this more extensive interview here, interview quote, illustrates this idea of trying to come up with a common perspective. But before we come up with any ideas from a technical point of view, we need to first consider if there is not a common objective between coastal protection and nature protection. Protection of the Wadden Sea, is there possibly a common how or the basis for a common how? So it was really about trying to find common perspectives in a fraught and difficult context. Uh, and a second interview quote here as well, we do not want to deepen the trenches, which sometimes manifest due to the legal frameworks, but fully consciously broaden the focus and speak at, at eye level with those who on the basis of a classic division of powers would not be there. What this really means was that they were also including um, additional stakeholders, for example, environmental NGOs as well, um, who traditionally in the past may not have had a seat at the table in such a strategy development process. Um, so they were, there was an attempt here really to be uh, inclusive as well, recognizing that there are other important actors as well. There was an emphasis here on finding a, a common language. What you need is a recognition of the, of the other standpoint and understanding that there can be other standpoints. 
We learned how to work with the worldviews of the others. We have learned to find a common language, which is really not so easy. The engineer, short to the point, the descriptive scientist is allowed to use a few more words. One has to accept that at the end. And here it was argued also that one should not mistakenly think that one had given the biologists a lot of space. That is not something where the balance of powers can be read. Um, here, again, an, an interviewee from the, a coastal engineer was, was arguing that um, even though in the document itself there may be more text from the nature conservation perspective, that should not be seen as an indication of the, the balance of power between um, coastal defence and nature conservation. So again, this is this document. If you read it, it makes the gives the impression of, of being very um, objective and scientific. But there is a, a politics behind it, um, and clearly in terms of how much space was given to the different perspectives and ensuring a certain balance as well. So a key is, issue here was, yeah, as I mentioned before, the um, conservation philosophy of letting nature be nature. Within the text itself, it is stated that it is for nature to decide where tidal channels flow, where a sandbank lies or does not lie. If a primary dune grows in the beach, where and how a new island develops. So this is a, a very clear statement of um, this approach of letting nature decide. Um, and here a nature conservationist argues that giving up on the idea of letting nature be nature would be when we bring in sediment and pile it up because we think that is good. That is not the option. The option is to give the Wadden Sea the possibility to do that itself. So here this is in a sense quite a an esoteric philosophical argument, if you like. Um, it's about the, the question of how can you do active sand nourishment without that being an active intervention, if you like, without that be contravening this conservation philosophy of letting nature be nature. Um, and the idea here is that, yes, we can have sand nourishment, but outside the boundary of the National Park itself. And then we let the Wadden Sea, the currents within the Wadden Sea, the, the, the channels, to uh, um, deposit then the sand, to carry the sand and sediment to where it should be to allow the um, for accumulation to develop to counteract sea level rise. Um, so that is the, the compromise approach that was established here. For the coastal engineers, of course, this was, this was challenging because there are significant uncertainties involved. Um, but this was nevertheless seen as, a, um, as an important concession from a conservation perspective. So in terms of some of the implications of the strategy... Um, the conservationists have agreed to some form of active intervention and agreed that this is necessary. At the same time, the, the document really is seen as a, as a starting point, a frame or a, a living document uh, to be brought forward with new knowledge. Um, so it creates a framework for future decision making. And this perspective really um, corresponds to what you may find in the literature as well about strategic planning, this idea of creating a frame for its future decision making. So it's interesting to see this here as well. Um, to date, sand nourishment continues to be relatively small scale, um, focused on, on silt primarily. Um, so, yeah, what, what is missing within this, this document? First of all, the, the future of, of the dikes, that's, that's a key question, which was also, in fact, addressed in a, in a book that was published in the same year, 2015, by, by Carson Reiser, Kurswechsel Kuste. 
um, a change of course for the coast, where he quite provocatively argued that a, a change in perspective is needed in the context of sea level rise for the North Sea coast. And, and he has argued over a, a longer period of time of the need to think more creatively about um, coastal landscapes, which allow the water in in a, in a controlled way to create a, a lagoon landscape at the coast, which may also have socioeconomic benefits as well. Um, within the strategy document itself, there is no real indication of how society will change between now and 2100. Indeed, at least for some participants, there was a, a working assumption that the same laws would apply um, in 2050 as they do today and indeed in 2100, which of course um, is not going to be the case. So again, there's quite a tight um, yeah, framing of this strategy. And um, certainly I would argue that there's a need for a much broader conversation about future perspectives on the Watton Sea coast. Um, and really here, um, what I've attempted to show is how different ideas about the coast, about nature and society are negotiated within these policy processes and what what that can mean and what is included, what is left out. And uh, I think this is an important way to, um, yeah, where the, the politics um, of Wadden Sea management become evident in practice, uh, where we can really see what the implications are, how they are manifested. Uh, so from that perspective, I... I think it's quite a, a valuable approach. Um, in terms of suggested reading, the, the document itself, the Watton Sea 2100 strategy is of course, it's available online in German, however. Um, I have written an article specifically on this process um, for ocean and coastal management, which is published in 2019. And there's also an, um, an article written by Hofstetter and Stock, two of the key authors of the strategy um, in the Journal of Coastal Conservation, which may be of interest. Um, yeah, thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, uh, my contact details are here. Should you wish to find out more, um, please let me know. Okay, thank you.